Olympic-based video games have been around since the 1980s, some being officially licensed and many being takes on certain events. Konami in particular had the Track and Field series, and there's also been a ton of games called stuff like Summer Games or Winter Games. No matter who's made them or where they've come from, they do tend to have one thing in common. Frantically mashing buttons to win is like the staple gameplay element that binds all of these style of games together. For this video, I'm going to take a look at every officially licensed Olympic release on a PlayStation system. So that means we won't be counting the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games series, and for now I'm also not going to look at these... I don't know what to call them, maybe spin-off titles? Like there have been tie-in games for just Olympic soccer or Olympic hockey. None of those today. Just the Olympics, as a video game, as a whole. Let's see how they've adapted and evolved over the past quarter century or so. And that makes the first game we're looking at, Olympic Games on PS1, released to coincide with the Olympic Games at Atlanta 1996, so the first Olympic Games that were on when the PlayStation was out. Let's take a little look at this one. To begin with, let's just get the subject of the visuals out of the way. It's ugly. Very ugly. This is the early days of 3D graphics and it really shows. The athletes in particular are almost haunting. Lifeless faces devoid of any extremities, almost like origami nightmare creatures. It may have been next gen at the time, but the visuals pale in comparison even to the 16-bit versions, which over time have stayed a lot more palatable. Anyway, we've got a decent number of events here, 15 in all, which isn't a bad start, along with three primary game modes to check out. Arcade, Olympic, and Challenge. Olympic is our main mode, so we'll start there. Our gameplay hasn't evolved much over the old track and field games. Spam the buttons as fast as you can, and you will win. It's just a game of endurance. How long can you take the pain in your fingers? The 100 meters didn't exactly prove challenging. Discus is up next. It's the same kind of idea, really, even though the event is pretty different. Tap frantically, but now press another button at the right time to make the throw. Such good technique. We'd expect better from an athlete of his caliber. With the high jump, well, guess what? Mash the buttons, but now you've got to match up some lines as well. Sailed over the bar. Do I really have to sit here and watch every other player, though? I can skip them, but only one by one. What a chore. Finally, I'm onto the pole vault. It looks the same as the high jump at first, but there's this spring thing on the line. Sometimes it seems like I can control it, and sometimes I can't. I don't really get it. Now, in terms of this video, it may not seem like much, but this skipping problem is really becoming an issue. I spent more time tapping X to skip the next player than actually playing the game. I can't even exit to the main menu. I'm forced to go through all of this or just turn the game off. Did they really think I wanted to watch this? Like, were they so proud that they thought it would trump watching the actual Olympics? Right, finally done. What's next? Okay, we know exactly what's going to happen here, and I ain't falling for it, so let's check out the options first. Well, thank God and everything holy, there is a skip CPU option. This is an absolute must if you're going to play this game, otherwise there's a real risk that this would last longer than the actual Olympics. Anyway, with that sorted, it's now time for the long jump. Right, okay, build up speed, and... An excellent run. What? How quick did that fly by? What kind of reflexes are expected here? Okay, second try. An excellent one. I think I got it. I could swear it was faster the first time round. Anyway, it's certainly more bearable now that the CPU attempts are skipped. Hard work and determination really paying off for these athletes. Now I could sit here and keep going through all of them over and over. 
But to quicken things up, we've got the shooting events. They just play like traditional old school arcade target shooters. Well anticipated. Well anticipated. Swimming and weightlifting are just more button tapping. And there's fencing as well, which is kind of like a very basic one on one fighter. You slog your way through the events and try and gather up as many medals as possible. Arcade mode isn't really much different. You just have limited lives, so fail three events and it's game over. From the title, you'd think that challenge mode would be something a little bit more interesting, like, you know, it would set challenges for you to try and complete. But no, it just works the same as the other modes, but you can select which events you want to play, which is convenient for recording this footage at least, but it's not really a challenge mode. It's primitive, it's 1996 early PlayStation days. It was never going to be the best example, but it's a start. All we've really done so far is translate the old traditional games, button tapping like crazy, into a 3D environment. The arms must be fully extended at the end. Now we jump forward only one year to get to the Nagano 98 Winter Olympics. It was actually released in 97, so a whole year early, and now we've got Konami of track and field games at the helm. And, well, what a difference one year can make. Visually, our 98 Winter Olympics is leaps and bounds above the previous game. Presentation feels a lot like what you'd get in an arcade game. Loud and colourful. It's actually really impressive for a game that's set in an area that's overwhelmingly white in colour. Arcade mode is gone, but Olympic and Challenge modes remain. I can't quite figure out what the difference is in this occasion. Selecting an event is at least right there, clear as day. You don't have to wander into the challenge mode and happen to figure out how to do it now. And when you do select an event, it actually shows you the controls. So a lot less need to keep referencing the manual for all the events. So whilst the previous game predated the DualShock controller coming out, this one does support analog sticks. So we should at least get some more accuracy. The only thing here is you actually have to activate the analog controls in the options menu. And by doing that, you disable the use of the D-pad, even on the menu screens. It just seems a little odd, why not just let you use both at once? 12 events are advertised for Nagano 98, although I count 13 on the selection screen. Now the Winter Olympics has pretty different sports represented, so I'm expecting some pretty different gameplay. We got some downhill skiing, which looks the part just fine, at least for the time, but it's really horribly slow. You can only build up a little bit of speed on the steepest of inclines, and even then, it hardly lasts. The controls I'm certain don't work properly, and I tried both D-pad and analog controls just in case. You don't seem to get control quick enough, either. The first few seconds, your guy just goes straight forward and you can't steer him. It results in a lot of false starts. It's not based on button tapping though, so we do have a big difference right away. Three of our events are skiing, and they all work the same. Sadly, the snowboarding event is functionally identical as well. So that's four events that really only differ in very minor visuals. And while I mentioned they don't use button tapping, we do have our traditional button tappers here. Can't be an Olympic video game without them, and that would be the skating events. You do have to press another button to turn, which is actually kind of annoying, because due to the camera angle and there being no mini-map, you can't really tell when a turn is coming. It's a fairly thoughtless oversight that has rendered an event that could have been at least okay into something very frustrating. Oh, and guess what? There's four of these events too, all functionally the same. So we're already halfway through this, and a lot of it's been effectively played in two games as opposed to eight. Bobsleigh and Luge, as you can probably imagine, play exactly the same. In this case, get your run up. Get on. Steer left or right down the course. It's all right, probably the most faithful and enjoyable to play so far. The ski jumping is the one most different to everything else, which I suppose makes sense, though I never really got my head around it. I'm always way too short of target, or just crash and burn. The freestyle jumping is based around button combos, and they get more difficult depending on the tougher jump. 
It's not a bad idea. They range from far too easy to very, very difficult. Finally, we have curling, which I think is the only time we'll see this event. Now, I did find it difficult. I wasn't good at it personally, but it seems functional enough. It plays pretty uniquely, and all the elements of the actual sport have been factored in as best they can. It's just not enough to keep me entertained. The 98 Winter Olympics sounds good on paper, 12 arcade style mini games all in one little package, but in reality it's only actually 4 or 5 games recycled over and over, and the big problem is they're just not very fun to play. New Olympics, new developer, Sydney 2000 is developed by Attention to Detail, famous for absolutely nothing. The intro package screams the new millennium louder than a Limp Bizkit concert. Honestly though, it's hard to believe this is running on the same system we saw the 96 Olympic Games running on, just four years earlier. The visuals have progressed at an incredible rate, it's the best it's ever looked, but what about the gameplay? Well, no. Not as much at least. We've got 12 events again, but we'll see how much they actually differ from each other to really be qualified as 12 games. Most still boil down to painfully mashing two power buttons at breakneck speeds, and then occasionally tapping an action button to do something. 100 meters, hurdles, swimming, they all work as you'd expect, with a few minor differences, usually based around when to press the action button. So get your fingers ready for a workout, because it's going to be a painful one. The throwing events, and the triple jump as well actually, aren't that much different. You mash the buttons to build momentum, and then get the timing right. The hammer throw in particular is a pain to time correctly. And that is going to be absolutely awful. That's a foul throw, it won't count! High jump I found awkward. You're supposed to just hold down the action button to jump, but I can't really get it to happen. I'm not going to spend hours just trying to do one high jump in one of these games. It's got to be easy to play, that's kind of the point of these. Pick up and play them and compete with your friends. If you have to spend hours practicing, it just defeats the point. Ugh. Weightlifting, more tapping and timing. Look at the bend in that bar! And cycling makes its debut. The race is on! By being slightly different in that you have to pace your mashing or you'll run out of stamina. Some other new events include diving, which works a lot like quick time events, and kayaking, which I found really awkward, like I'm actually to trying to far. control myself on rapid waters. So I guess they got me there. On into gate 6. Although it sounds like I'm moaning a bit, honestly I don't hate any of these events. Except maybe one, and that's the skeet shooting. I don't care how big this dude's moustache is, the aiming is outright impossible. The crosshair moves like it's on ice. It's unlike any shooter I've ever played. And it's the year 2000 now, so we've got plenty of FPSs to take example from. There's no excuses. You can just go for a high score in the arcade mode if you want, or head down the Olympic route. Now, praise to be given to the developers here, because they've tried to make the Olympic mode something a little bit more interesting. You slowly work your way up through qualifying events to get to the Olympic Games. You have your own stats for each event, which influence the difficulty. You can train these through gym-based minigames. It actually resembles some kind of career mode, and that's pretty cool. This ends our time with the PS1 generation of Olympic Games. Now, there have been some teething problems, but they are getting better as they go along. Sydney 2000 ain't going to keep you occupied for long, but so far it is the best of the games. Salt Lake 2002 gives us our first representation of the Olympic Games on the PlayStation 2. And visually, it's the best yet, which is a promising first impression, but it's kind of expected given the leap in technology. We only get six events here. Now don't get me wrong, I would rather six events done well rather than loads of subpar ones, but it certainly makes the game feel a little bit stripped down. 
There are 8 and 16 bit titles, with more variety in this genre. Downhill skiing feels a lot better than last time with a much better sense of speed and control and it fits the event, so we've got a nice improvement right away. The skiing slalom however is a nightmare. The controls just don't complement the event at all, making for really fiddly turns and frequent frustrating failures. The snowboarding is in a similar boat, using pretty much the same control as the skiing. And the American on the red run, looking so good as he enters the bottom half of the course. I struggle to make much progress before I just get annoyed and quit. Ski jumping has been simplified, making it much more easier and enjoyable than we've had before, but it's one of the shortest lasting events, so with little to actually do, it doesn't hold your attention for too long. Sure it's acceptable, but it's not really worth the price of admission. Freestyle is back, it works mostly the same, you hit the correct buttons at the right time, basically a rhythm game light. And last of all, we got bobsleighing, charge up the speed meter, get in, crash at the first major turn. At least that's the cycle I went through. Annoying, but remember we've got options. I don't have to just keep playing this version of bobsleighing over and over. Already that's it. That's all the events in Salt Lake 2002. They could have at least added maybe some of the similar events just as an excuse to change up the tracks and courses. It might have helped with the replayability of the game, but nope, six games that are the same thing every time and they last a few minutes each. It's not really going to keep you playing for very long. The different modes now make no real difference to the overall experience either, once again feeling a bit stripped down. The main feature of Olympic mode this time is it has an opening and closing ceremony. That's a first, but enough to have its whole own mode dedicated to it? I don't know. Yes, Stuart, we rarely know what to expect from these ceremonies, as over the years there have been some real surprises, but we know it will be entertaining and really raise expectation for the games themselves. The big takeaway I took from Salt Lake 2002 was how disappointing it would be to have bought this at the time for full retail price. And I know it sounds like I'm hating on a lot of these games all the time, but can you imagine forking out full retail price, £50, and getting one of these in return, it'll be pretty disappointing, but oh well, let's take a trip to Athens. Eurocom have taken the reins to develop the Athens Summer Olympics 2004. You've heard of the term quality over quantity, well these guys just said to hell with that and packed this game with the most content yet. Saying that, it sounds like I'm taking a bit of a dig at the game, but to be honest, this is actually a fairly well presented game has some thought put into it at least. The number of nations each of these games allows you to play as varies greatly each time, but this one really sets a record now with 64 nations. To put that into perspective, the last game, Salt Lake, only had 16. You'd think this would be an easy thing to do, just add some more flags in the game, but it's taken this long to have a decent portion of the Olympic world represented. Now this time I'm not going to be able to go through every single event, Sure, last time we had six events to go through, but now we've got 25. The track events alone make up more than Salt Lake 2002. Take a wild guess at what the controls are. Oh yeah, we're back to classic controls. New developers, sure, but that doesn't necessarily mean new ideas. Tap like a maniac, make those fingers ache. With these kinds of games, it's as old as time, but it gets the job done. So far, attempts at making things more complicated haven't exactly had great results, so I'm starting to feel like this may be the best option for now. Plenty of events add elements of timing. The hurdles I found awkward in this respect, it felt like luck more than anything. And now here comes Australia! Kinda got the same with the high jump. You have to time every step but it never feels quite right. Getting the rhythm is pretty tough, at least for me. The long and triple jumps are a little bit better in this respect. They can be easy to foul, but I managed to pull off a few decent jumps. And so far, the controls, or at least the timing elements of the controls, all suit the respective events, even when I don't personally get along with them. Free throwing events all use a different system, which is actually pretty nice because the real events use very different techniques. So it feels like there was actual thought involved when developing how they're going to play. That looks good, very simple technique, but very, very effective. 
The four swimming events is more like playing four slightly different settings than actual separate events. They all play identically, which is just like the track events, but now you have to time your breathing too. As we approach 25 meters, there's not much to separate them. Gymnastic events, however, are pretty varied. The floor exercises are all about precise timing. And if you think this looks familiar, yes, you can use a dance mat controller. I wonder if anyone's actually done that. Our first equestrian event looks the part, but leaves a bit to be desired. It doesn't feel like you have a lot of control over the end result. Oh, and that's unlucky. Weightlifting, not much different to previous entries, but the archery and skeet shooting have much more care taken in getting them to feel right. Archery in particular requires some actual skill. Wind speed and direction will influence where your shot lands, and therefore need to be accounted for if you want to stand a chance. Once again, all the different game modes don't make much of a difference. Arcade is basically quick play mode, select the event and play it, and competition mode gives it a kind of Olympic structure. Honestly, this isn't a half bad showing. It's a pretty good take on the old school style of track and field and Olympic style games that we've had for decades now. And most of the games in this one are pretty playable, pretty intuitively playable that is, as opposed to being really strange and complicated. It's probably our best showing yet, another Summer Olympic Games taking that title, we'll see if we have any proper good winter ones and we'll move on to the next one right now. With Torino 2006 we are once again swapping up developers and publishers, now published by 2K and developed by 49 games who have a lot of experience in making winter sports and athletics based games. So let's see if that shows in the end result. As is becoming a trend with these winter olympic games, we're back to being a little bit more stripped down. Fewer nations and events to choose from than 2004, but we do have more than previous Winter Olympics at least. Simplified and intuitive controls are the real strength. The downhill skiing has a great sense of speed and the controls aren't making it any more complicated than necessary. It's simple, but actually quite fun. Great. The bobsleigh and luge also get this right, fast paced with controls that match the sport slightly shifting your weight as opposed to outright steering, which as a minigame is exactly what it's supposed to be. Speed skating revolves around timing button taps with the corresponding skates, thus generating the right rhythm. It matches up well, but it does take practice. You'll see that there's challenges to complete with unlockables like Extreme Difficulty. Getting to that point though, I don't think you'll really be wanting to play that much more. The gameplay for the most part is decent, but it would work best as a multiplayer experience. You'll perhaps get an hour or two out of Torino 2006 before you've experienced everything you need to. That was an early landing. A bit more of a hop than a jump if you ask me. Another three games, another generation down. That's it for our PS2 titles, and we are still improving. It's gradual, but they are getting better and better as time goes along. So it's gonna be interesting to see if the next generational leap, the PS3, keeps that trend going. On to Beijing 2008. Sega have now taken over publishing, and Eurocom have made a return to the development. Another generation leap, and it's clear the moment you switch on the game, for the first time, this looks like a part of the modern era of gaming. This is the first Olympic title to go online, and the servers have since gone down, but the game will still attempt to connect. Actually, it won't let you play at all if you can't. You have to set your PlayStation 3 to offline in order to access the game. It's a bit of a pain, but at least it's possible. With 38 events across 10 disciplines, Beijing 2008 dwarfs all the previous entries for content. When it comes to events that are essentially racing, the controls involve... well... The only difference now is you have to charge up a meter to start. It's awkward to time it right and doesn't exactly add anything. It's still arcadey button mashing, so just leave it be. 
Once again, each of the throwing events vary in controls. Once again, you can see there's thought put into these, even if the end result is a little awkward or flawed. Like with the diving, which was a new system entirely, involving moving the analog sticks alongside these little dots. Doing one stick is way too easy, but then doing two is really difficult to keep track of. I can see what they're going for, and I don't hate the idea. The execution just needs a bit of a middle ground. There's a ton more gymnastics to play, which have some of the most unique gameplay offered yet, often involving rhythm, precision, and some tapping all combined. They work well enough, and it's just nice to see some of these represented. Shooting also comes in multiple events, each with its uniquely tailored gameplay. Judo makes its debut, though I found it confusing to get the hang of. Still, it's our first combat sport. Table tennis is also a newcomer, which I was looking forward to playing, but damn, timing a hit is hard as hell. You can play these events in training mode, which is basically just practice or free play, competition mode, which is just multiplayer, or once again we got Olympic mode, now complete with stats and what are essentially experience points you get as you complete events. If you underperform, it's a straight up game over, which I have to admit took me by surprise because it's not often you find yourself starting from the very beginning these days. This is another mixed bag. Some events are pretty good, some are frustrating, some are a chore. You'll find yourself abandoning half of these events pretty early on, and it just goes to show that just because you packed more into these discs doesn't mean it's necessarily better. So we'll move on now to our first Winter Olympics on the PS3 and see what we get with that. Still Sega, so maybe it'll be more of the same, maybe they'll have improved. Looks like we're sticking with the Sega and Eurocom duo, which can only be a good thing compared to developing a game from scratch every two years. Sticking to the pattern of the Winter Olympics, we're back to basics, a more stripped down title. Downhill skiing and the returning snowboarding are fairly intense, fast as hell, and simple to control. This is probably the most I've enjoyed these downhill events. I feel like I have more control than ever, so if I suck, it feels like it's more on me this time. Ski jumping has gone down a whole new direction in a first person view, and is overall just much easier to get the hang of. Freestyle takes the exact same system the diving used in Beijing, matching up analog sticks to the dots in the rings. Bobsleigh is a little bit awkward, you have to control each individual athlete's weight with the analog sticks. Skeleton and Luge are easier to control because they're single person, but the bobsleigh I found a little bit too much. Only one event that consistently uses button tapping, and that's the skating, so no need to rest your fingers every five minutes. The real challenge is in the turning, getting the timing and the angle right. It's not too bad, but the downhill events are better. Whilst compared to previous Winter Olympic titles, this is an improvement, it's still a lot more of the same. Now that I've played so many of these, it is getting old fast. And once again I find myself saying that there's not much to keep you coming back to Vancouver 2010. And you know, I think that's the problem I'm having with a lot of these Olympic video games. They're packages of arcade-style mini-games. Now there's nothing wrong with that on the surface, but arcade games rely on being addictive, and these just aren't. The Olympic mode is now no different to standard practice play. Pick an event and play it, that's it. The only unique element is there's a medal ceremony afterwards minus the medals themselves. And that's it, we've hit the end of the road for Winter Olympics video games. Over a decade old, but at least as of 2021, we have not seen another game dedicated just solely to the Winter Olympics. I was going to say simulating them, but they're not really simulations, but you get what I mean. We've had a few little things come along, I know the game's steep, had a Winter Olympics expansion, so it's not like it's been completely ignored, but at least in the context of this video, this is it for Winter Olympics. And along comes London 2012. Hard to believe it's almost a decade ago. Immediate first impression, the presentation is A+. Now, most of the games have had great presentation, but this is just a whole new level. It feels like you're watching the Olympics on TV. Even the venues are all very accurate. 
preparation, London is finally ready to welcome the world to the 2012 Olympic Games. Such a magnificent city, so many views with the Thames stretching away into the distance and with so many new venues waiting to be tested, this really could be the best games ever. The Olympic Stadium splendid, glowing like a beacon here in London. And the closer we move to modern day, the more events you can expect. This time 45 in all. And whilst many are just swimming or track racing, London 2012 still has by far the most variety we've had to offer. We've had some control overhauls too, no insane button tapping, no bizarre overcomplicated control systems. Practice makes perfect and they finally nailed it, at least with most of the events. The most tap based events will be on the track, but even that's been reduced to just tapping one button instead of having to go absolutely nuts on it, the focus has been shifted to control and balance. qualification for Great Britain. Qualifying in second is Germany. And Canada in third make their way. Where swimming events used to primarily mimic the track racing controls, now they have their whole own new system. You control the stroke, with the aim being to stay in rhythm. It works pretty well and gives the swimming its own identity for once. The return of the kayak is welcome with reasonable controls. I'd even go as far to say it's actually quite fun to play. But now he's through that gate, passes through that gate with no problems at all. Really fantastic time that. Well, that's another gate safely negotiated. Throwing and shooting events all have control systems that complement the events, whilst also being forgiving enough to beginners. To over 90 meters. Good news for Great Britain. The table tennis is exactly what I wanted it to be in Beijing. There's a whole game in this event alone. It's a really well made mini game to say the least, but be warned it can quickly take up most of your time with the game. It's hard as hell and your opponents are relentless. Huge praise to the attention to detail here. He needs to dig deep and focus here. Here we go with the second game now. Well, Only two gymnastic events make an appearance with trampoline and vault, both being quick time events based on the routine you choose. There's nothing wrong with them, but they show less innovation than the other events in the game, and it's surprising to see such a lack of gymnastics. Even still, for the first time, there's no absolute duds. Some events stronger than others, sure, but nothing that's painful to play. Olympic mode is simple but effective. You pick two sports each day of the Olympics, you go through qualifiers before reaching the finals. Oh, and when you win your medals, you actually get a medal this time. As well as tokens you can use to retry events that you may have messed up on. What can I say? We actually have a pretty solid video game. Well done, Sega. It's good in multiplayer, but also has a pretty enticing single player mode in the Olympic mode as well. That automatically makes this the best option yet for any Olympic video game, summer or winter. At this point, we enter a near decade long drought of pure Olympic video games. Until we get to Tokyo, it's pretty much just Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. On one hand, sure, they're getting a little repetitive, but with London 2012, they finally started to show some real promise, and suddenly they're gone. But in the long run, maybe it was a good thing to take a break, because Tokyo 2020 actually feels like something completely new. Developed in-house by Sega, it was originally released back in 2019 in Japan, but didn't find its way to the West until 2021 when the games actually took place. Visually, we've evolved into a UI more befitting of modern sports titles. Character models lean on the cartoony side, but that matches the overall tone and very arcade-driven gameplay, which is being fully embraced. Having just shy of 20 events, it may not boast the numbers of some previous entries, but it sure makes up for that in actual variety. Don't expect like 30 track and field events and then another 15 aquatic ones that all work the same. 
These are all individual events that are pretty unique. One thing that does mean is some of the staples of previous entries are nowhere to be found. Notably, the entire disciplines of shooting, archery, and even gymnastics didn't make the cut. In their place, we get a lot more team sports, with most making their first appearance. What they do all have in common is having a more arcadey style, which does set them apart from their respective yearly release titles. Baseball could be its whole own game, and does actually remind me of a few kind of arcadey baseball games that have been released in the past. It's a solid interpretation of the game, and I had a lot of fun with it. Football and basketball are both fast paced, with short rounds, but don't have the best AI. The defending in basketball in particular is a little bit 50 50. These kind of games would work a lot better in multiplayer though than against the CPU. Rugby Sevens is a pretty interesting addition, and its easy to follow pass and block system makes it better than a lot of games dedicated to the sport. Of course we still get events centred around racing. They have the same basic foundations, but then each event builds upon that. The three track events share the most in common. You tap X to go fast, but you gotta pay attention to the unique elements in each. The two swimming races have almost nothing in common though. The controls match the kind of stroke used in each, so being good at one won't necessarily translate to being good at the other. BMX joins the party as a racing event, which adds jumps and turns to keep you on your toes. And if you prefer punching things, well that's great, because boxing has finally made an appearance. The arcade nature on the surface comes across somewhat similarly to Punch-Out, but really it ends up a little bit button mashy. Each analogue stick controls an arm, which makes the footwork very limited. I seem to have a lot of success just wailing on the opponents, while strafing about wildly. It still manages to be good fun though. Judo has made its return, and is in much better shape than before. I actually understand what I'm supposed to do now. <laughs> Another three events that you could group together sharing the same groundwork are tennis, table tennis, and volleyball. I don't know if these kind of games have a collective term. Net games? Anyway, regular tennis is another one that could be its own game entirely. It's simple to pick up and play, but can get pretty challenging as it goes on. As for beach volleyball, it does a respectable job, but it's probably the weakest of the three. Setting up your shots slows down the pace quite a bit, which doesn't quite match up to the arcade style we're going for. But truth be told, it's still better than a lot of the events previous entries had to offer. And honestly, there are barely any weak links here, nor lazy duplicate events. Your own character is more customizable than ever before, with some pretty wacky outfits to unlock, which you do so from like currency you collect from completing games. There's a big focus on online multiplayer, and being a modern game I was actually able to try it out this time. With all the events being simple and easy to pick up and play, it's quite a fun game to play online, you don't just get dominated all the time. Almost like Mario Kart, it's kind of like everyone stands a chance, which makes for a much more enjoyable multiplayer experience. We've actually ended up with a kind of general rule. As time's gone on, these games have just got better. So there's no need to start getting out charts and comparing stuff, the undisputed king of the Olympic video game, at the present, is Tokyo 2020. All we can really do now is hope that they carry on this trend. It would be nice to not have to wait a whole other decade to see another Olympic video game, especially for the Winter Olympics where it really has been over a decade now, and could really do with being updated in the style of Tokyo. All we can do is wait, hope, and be thankful that we've at least got something that's worth playing.